All right, we're joined by a very special guest here now on the John Neighbor Show. As we know, Razorback Spring Practice is up and going once again, and there's been a lot of excitement surrounding it, surprisingly so, for a team that went 4-8. and eight. But, hey, I guess that's what the return of Bobby Petrino can do for so many Razorback fans. So let's talk more about spring practice, not only for Arkansas, but around the SEC as we welcome in our guest, Barrett Salee of Outkick the Coverage or just Outkick.com. Does all things college football, does podcasts and shows for him and everything. And Barrett, as always, man, it's good to talk with you. How you been? You too, man. It's been uh, it's been a few uh, few months here now. I always jo- enjoy my uh, my interaction with Mr. John Neighbors, my, uh, my I guess, uh, what do you call it? Like, we, we are a duo at uh, at Media Days Karaoke. Like, what do we, like, because it's not like we're back and forth. Right. Like, we're just sort of a, a, one, a part of one big band. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know if there's a some sort of record label we can put on it. Like, you know, if, if, if it's like, you know, Death Row Records or something. You know, That's right. Like something like that that can make it sound cooler than what it actually is. But yeah, man, uh, we, uh, we we're always the features, too. It seems like we always get brought up. It's like somebody gets a little nervous at karaoke. Hey, we got it. We got to jump up there. We with can them. do it. We can handle it. Yeah, we get can all roll it. Right. Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. SEC Media Days in Dallas this year, which I know we'll talk a little bit about. But uh, but Barrett, I know, uh, you know SEC spring practice, you're going to have a lot of new things happening this year. The addition of Texas and Oklahoma is big. But, you know, Arkansas, four and eight last year wasn't exactly ideal, not exactly a great year. But people wanted Sam Pittman fired. He stays on, but he hires Bobby Petrino in the return. Just what do you think, like, <laughs> Arkansas right now and where it stands in SEC football, just what do you make of their current situation and uh, where they find themselves? I look at Arkansas and I kind of scratch my head like, okay, what are you? (laughs) As a program, like, what are you? Because I don't know if there's an answer to that right now. Because like, it's the biggest mystery in the SEC because, A, I mean, from your perspective, I'd love to know the the reception of Bobby Petrino compared to, to when he was hired. What do the, what do the fans think now? Um, but, and Sam Pittman on the hot seat, um, you know, a new quarterback, new, you know, the offensive line situation at defense, what are you going to do to fix that? It's, it's one of those things where you have, I would say a little bit of a desperation hire in a critical year and one that everybody knows about both positively and negatively. It's just, it's a fascinating team. And I know, a lot of people will focus on, you know, Michigan and, and Alabama and Ohio state and like all the big teams that are fighting for the national championship. And uh, okay. Rightfully so. But as I've said many times, my joy of college football goes far beyond who wins the national championship or who is competing for the national championship. Uh, it's, it's stories like this. It's under the radar things that maybe people aren't talking about. It's uh, what's going to happen at Mississippi state. What's going to, what it's going to be like, you know, with California and Stanford and SMU in the PAC or in the ACC, like those things intrigue me. And I think of that group, non-national championship uh, talking points and stories, I think Arkansas is either at or near the top of the list. Well, I'm going to be honest with you because the Bobby Petrino thing, I, I, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's I, I was excited personally because I, I was in college at the University of Arkansas when Bob Petrino was there. So I always got a love in my heart for way to guy. make me feel old. Appreciate that. Yeah, I know. It's like, but hey, I went there for seven and a half years. So it's not like I was well, a, a you're young Van Wilder. You know, I get it. Yeah. But it was. But you might be too young for Van Wilder. Jeez. No, no, no. no. I, I, Do you even I, get that reference? Oh, yeah. Van Wilder, dude. Like, okay, it's one of my favorite movies, okay, right? Good. It was. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, one of his breakout roles, well, great movie. So, but yeah, well, no, I get that role, one. I so, uh, so. But you know, it was it was great to see the excitement surrounding something for Arkansas positively. And I I remember when it was done, Barrett. Then they announced the, the hiring of it. It was the same day as the Arkansas Duke basketball game, which was already a huge deal. I know the basketball team really fell short, which is a whole nother conversation. But still. There was a huge basketball game against Duke that just doesn't happen that often, and Arkansas won. And I have never in my life seen something like at that game where you had students painted their bodies that said Bobby across the front of the student section. Oh, geez. Like, they they had that. There There were two chants that happened during the game for Bobby. Just because he had he had gotten there and he was in the suite and everyone saw him on the video board. But the craziest thing is when Arkansas beat Duke, they rushed the court. It's it's pandemonium. It's crazy. It's fun. And on the court, minutes after the game ended, another Bobby chant breaks out. 
And I just don't know if you get wow. that anywhere else in any other circumstance for an offensive coordinator hire. I just don't think that ever happens anywhere else but Arkansas. That is crazy. That is crazy. Like, I, I was just like, wow. I was I'm very impressed by it. But that I think the excitement comes and I was from the return of the prodigal son, if you want to call it that. But also, people remember what he did at Arkansas. And it was incredible. He had great offenses and everything. But there's an element to where he was at Texas A&M at Jim, with Jimbo Fisher last year. And he's even alluded to some of the stuff where maybe it wasn't fully his offense or didn't fully grasp the lingo and everything. But it seems like Sam Pittman's basically said, here, Bobby, just do, do whatever you need to do. I'll be over here if you need me. Just take the offense and go. So how good can this offense be with a lot of new pieces, a lot of new faces? But how good can they be with Bobby Petrino at the helm, being the offensive coordinator, assuming he has full control of the offense? Well, full disclosure, I am a Falcons fan. So <laughs> the relationship Whoops. I have as a fan <laughs> with Bobby Petrino is not very good, but he's a great offensive mind. I think we've all known that. But how great of an offensive mind is he? Because you mentioned with Texas A&M, I'm going to kind of throw that out the window. A, because Jimbo Fisher is Jimbo Fisher, and B, it was a disaster. That was a disaster way to happen. I think when he was hired, it was kind of like, really, what, what are we even doing here? Come on. Um, but also his last couple of years as a court or as a head coach in FBS, it wasn't that great uh, in terms of, of offensive innovation. I think what he's going to have to do is I wouldn't say dumb down his, his system just from a verbiage standpoint, don't get too crazy because I mean, college kids just don't do that. Like that's not something that, that is sort of in their world, having NFL style play calls that they have to go through and, and decipher. So I think that's the thing. If, if, if Pittman gives him full reign, and like you said, it seems like it's going to be that way, Bobby's going to have to make some concessions. And I I don't know mentally if he's capable of doing that because when it comes to stubbornness on like the Jimbo Fisher scale, like Petrino's like really near the top of that. Um, so, you know, I think it's going to be a challenge, it's going to be interesting. I did the last few years, did, did Bobby Petrino get served a slice of humble pie? I don't know. We'll see. Um, but he's he's been stubborn in the past, and it's a critical year, and he's taken over a situation where nobody really knows what Arkansas is from a personnel standpoint to begin with. And, and that's why I think in the spring portal window after spring practice, that's when you're going to see exactly what Petrino is and what Pittman is with Petrino because you're going to have a really good idea of who thrives in this system and who doesn't. And there are, it's going to be a much busier spring portal window than it was last year. And, and I think more important across the country as well. Well, I think we all can agree that the, the quarterback position, of course, is the most important. But Petrino has been great with a lot of quarterbacks. He's had a Heisman Trophy winner, Lamar Jackson. And we know about Ryan Mallett, rest in peace, uh, Tyler Wilson. I mean, he's always had really great quarterback play, some better than others. But you know, it's been a while since that's happened. Taylor Green, the transfer from Boise State, I've gone, I've gone to the spring practices, and Barrett, there, there ain't no competition. He's the guy. He's the starter. He's been the one guy for the entire spring practice, and I don't think that's changing. But well, what, do you, what can you tell us about Taylor Green and, and being in the system? Didn't have the greatest numbers at Boise State, but seems to have a lot of upside, and Bobby Petrino really likes him where they got him out of the portal this past year. Well, you know, his, his career at Boise State was just kind of like – confusing right he was in sometimes he was out sometimes he started when Bachmeyer was injured then he kept the job and then you know whatever it's like let the dude get comfortable right like let him cook and, and see what he can do and if being and I haven't been to practice you have uh but if he's if it's basically his to lose right now then I think that will help him reach the upside that I think Maybe he showed at times, but not necessarily consistently for, again, sort of the same reasons. You, you sort of didn't know what you were going to get if you're, if you're anybody on that offense on any given day. Um, and so I, I, from an upside standpoint, is he going to throw for 4,000 and rush for 1,000? No. Um, but I think with the, with the rushing attack that he is going to have, does he, is he able to be dynamic enough to provide – you know, enough of a, a enough of be enough of a weapon where, you know, you're going to get one on one coverage and can he take advantage of one on one coverage? I don't know if he can from a passing standpoint. He's been kind of hit or miss. Deep balls have not really been consistent, but I I think if you're comparing 
him to Jacoby Criswell, I don't think there is a contest right now. But like I said, it's going to be a bigger spring portal window. This is an audition, and it's one that he has to win now. Otherwise, I do think that Arkansas will be in that. I've heard Arkansas is in the market, at least feeling, and everybody is to an extent, at least keeping options open, which is fine. That's the way things are supposed to be these days. We're speaking with Barrett Salee of Outkick.com here on the John Neighbors Show. Uh, Barrett, I, you know, we've talked at SEC Media Days, and I know you're a big Sam Pittman fan personally, and I am too. I mean, he's just a, he's just a good old boy, a good old football coach, and he's had a lot of success as an offensive line coach. But it, it's been such a weird thing for him. He takes over an Arkansas job that was just trash. I mean, it had I think it was a, a total of eight wins in three seasons. And, and he comes in during the COVID year, and, you know, they reward him by having an all-SEC schedule. It's like, okay, here you go. There's your eight games plus Georgia <laughs> and Florida. So, I mean, it, it just – Seemed like it was all going against him. And then he had the year in 2021 with nine wins, the best year Arkansas had in over a decade or about a decade. But since then, it's just gone from nine wins to seven wins to four wins. There's probably a lot of moving parts to this, but why do you feel like it's gotten to that point for Sam Pittman where he showed and he showed he was capable as a head coach to have a lot of success in 2021. But how has it gotten to this point to where it's essentially, it's like, Hey, this is do or die right now. And you better make some improvements from this past year. I mean, it's defense, you know, I think I, I wouldn't say he neglected them, but I think from a personnel standpoint, there was no development um, for the most part. I mean, there was some here and there, but I think from a defensive standpoint, especially in the back end, it was just, it, it, he, they were neglected. And what was it two years ago when they had the worst pass defense in the, in the nation last year, you know, it wasn't, there's only one way to go, but up obviously. Um, and, and so I think that's it. You know, you, I, I don't know if Pittman was, prepared for all the moving parts of the transfer portal. Like when you have your top safety leave, like when you have a couple other corners leave, you know, it's, you have to prepare for that. And I think he probably knows that now, but you can't go back in time, right? You can't hop in that DeLorean fire up the flux capacitor and go back and, and start re-recruiting your stars earlier. Um, so I think that's it. I think from an offensive standpoint, they've had the good, the right idea. I mean, I think obviously they had the quarterback, the right quarterback. When Kendall was there as coordinator, they were fine. Uh, but I think it's just been maybe an improv. They were not prepared totally for the moving parts of the transfer portal and have been sort of spinning their wheels playing catch up, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And so you're in a situation now where it is do or die. And I think the one saving grace for Arkansas is that they don't have that massive gauntlet like they consistently have every other. Like, I don't think Arkansas fans will be sending letters to Mark Womack at the SEC office asking why he hates them and when he makes the schedule this year. In the past, maybe so. Um, but moving forward, it seems like Arkansas is in a different spot than they're comfortable with. So I think the schedule had something to do with it, too. Um, but I honestly think it was just, for, for the most part, not preparing for the tampering aspect of this because we all know what happens um, and the recruitment of your own roster and how you approach the transfer portal. All those things, I think Arkansas what was, was a little behind in, in terms of, of operating or just didn't operate it the way, didn't go about it the way that eventually it evolved into for everybody. Yeah. Cause I even look at it too, Barrett, where and maybe this is just revisionist history, but I feel like if Sam Pittman, where he's at now, if you would have placed him in college football and as the head coach of Arkansas, for instance, back five, 10 years ago, I think it would almost be a different thing where if it was in the under the old brigade of just how it was done in recruiting with no NIL and the transfer portal was different, I think it would change a lot of things. And this isn't a slight against Pittman, but you know him. He just wants to coach football. You know, he, he's not the guy yeah. that's playing the games like a lot of other coaches have to do to get to get the recruits. He was just going in and. You know, hey, you want to play football with me? Let's have some fun and let's get you developed and everything. Well, and that's a big problem too. Yeah, like that's a huge problem. And if and that, to me, Pittman is, and, and it's not just because he's been around for a long time and and wants to do it the old school way. I always talk about like the the coaches that just don't want to do it anymore, right? That just are like, screw it, I don't want to, I don't want to coach anymore. To me, Pittman might be one of those guys where you know after this year, if it doesn't go well, if he dismiss, it gets dismissed, he's just like, all right, I'm out. I live the buyout life. I don't want to deal with all this nonsense anymore. And I'm not just not to say that he's mailing it in, but I think if, if that's what happens, if he's done, I think he could be one of those guys that is just like, this sucks. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to get back into it. It's just not worth it because from a time management standpoint, 
It's just, it, there, it's too much. Why would you, if you don't like it now in your current role, why would you even continue to do that, be in this line of work? Yeah, because I was even thinking when he would retire, uh, he's going to just move down to Hot Springs and be on the lake and, and hang out. I mean, that's his goal. And he said this is his last job. And it's I not believe a bad it. life. Yeah, but it, that's the thing is like, I, I agree with you. If you we I watched videos of his press conferences uh, back in the in the 2021 season. Now, granted, winning always helps, but he was a guy that said some funny stuff and, and was laughing a little bit. And, and you could tell he was still enjoying it. And it's just, I have not seen Pittman smile, laugh, or, or seem like he's having fun. And again, I think there's a lot of coaches that are that way. And I think just because of the deal where I uh, heard from inside uh, the program that Sam Pittman had a meeting after the season ended with 40 some odd players in one day. And every single one of them just said, how much uh, y'all need in more NIL, like every single one of them. And that's just not yeah. the, and that's just not Pittman's style. So that's where it's kind of scary. If you're a Razorback fan, where you want Arkansas to do well, you want Sam Pittman to do well, but if he's not somebody that's willing and able to play the game, then you know you may have to go a different direction, try to find somebody who can well, at a place that, like Arkansas. And that's the thing is that Arkansas is going to, ha- if that does happen, going down that rabbit hole, Arkansas is going to be have to be very, very smart with what they do because I've heard from a lot of coaches that th- they're not going to just leave the, j- and go to the NFL. They're just going to retire early. They're just going to take their paycheck and be like, look, if I can live this life, I'm going to live this life. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I used to love doing it. I don't. I'm going to go just hang out, start a consulting firm or whatever, be on TV and be done with it. And I'm talking about not just coaches that are struggling on the hot seat, like coaches that are legitimately good at what they do are sick of it. So I can't imagine what a guy who doesn't want to do it is like. I mean, if and and I'm not saying Pittman feels that way. I mean, you know him better than I do. I like Sam a lot. But if there are coaches that literally get angry about those conversations, this is their last year in college football, period. And there are going to be a lot of them that leave after this season. Well, I also know with the SEC, you know, there's there's always the NIL and the transfer portal and, and the changes there. But just in the conference alone, I mean, this is going to be the first year without Nick Saban at Alabama, which is just going to be a wild thing to think about. But you got a new coach at Bama. You got a new coach at Texas A&M. Uh, you got a lot of uh, guys and, and programs that maybe are going to try to take their game up because you no longer have Nick Saban at Alabama. But just looking at the SEC and especially the, some of the new coaches and the new faces there, just in your early, early view of it, how do you see it kind of playing out? And is it Georgia still the favorite and everybody else is behind? Maybe Texas is in there too. Just how do you feel like the overall conference is looking right now? Yeah, I mean, Georgia is going to be a monster again. And honestly, like I know they didn't make the playoff last year. In most years, they still would have, right? And that was the the cards that, that that were dealt to the committee last year were unique, and an undefeated team that loses in the SEC championship game generally is going to make it every year. That just didn't work out this year, but that doesn't change the fact that Georgia still rules college football, and I think that needs to be consistently hammered into the ground. That no, this is not a dynasty because Michigan rules college football as of this second, but it's darn close. With that said, Texas is way more ready to compete than everybody else in the SEC. The gap between, to me, Georgia and Texas is not nearly as wide as the gap between Texas and everybody else. I think that team, from a line of scrimmage standpoint, from a depth standpoint, from a skill player standpoint, and from a coaching standpoint, is 100% ready to be an sec power. And the reason I say that is not only has Sark treated it that way since he got the job, he's approached the portal in the right way. He's approached uh, the NIO game in the right way. And he's got a great foundation for that. And he already proved it. He already proved that he can go in and win in Tuscaloosa playing sec football because they played sec football. Like that was, they whipped Alabama at the line of scrimmage on both sides, had a better quarterback and came back, got punched in the face. I don't think people realize Texas was down in the fourth quarter in that game. And they didn't, they didn't panic at all. And then obviously going to not only the, the semifinal, but you know, having a chance to win on the final play. You know, it's that Texas team is is legit. And everybody else, I mean, I think Ole Miss is going to be awesome. I think Ole Miss is going to make the playoff. I love that Lane has gone all in. And said, okay, this is the year, veteran quarterback, uh, edge rushers that are out, you know, are just freak shows, good offensive line, 
we're going to get the transfer portal. We're going to hit our wide receivers. We are going to go all in this year because he knows how big that is, but they're not capable of winning a national championship. And I don't think Alabama is either. However, like I said before, spring portal window going to be way busier this year than it was last year, especially for Alabama. So right now I put Alabama and Ole Miss in the same group, pretty far behind Texas and Georgia, but I reserve the right to change my opinion on Alabama come, I don't know, May 2nd. Well, I'm, I'm sure that if uh, Alabama loses a game or two in the first half of the season, that the fans will be totally <laughs> rational about it all and, and be very patient. But, uh, but Barrett, yes. uh, before, uh, before I let you get out of here, I know you, you, you saw it and we've been talking about it, but what is this crap, man, about the NCAA and, and trying to ban prop bets? <laughs> like, what, what, what are we doing here, man? Like, you're telling me the NCAA, is, as it is, is we all know what it is. But, like, is this really something that is on the forefront that we got to get done right now? I mean, what in the world? You can bet on the games, just not the prop bets. Get out of here with that stuff, man. So the NCAA right now, in Home Alone 2, when Harry and Marv are hanging off the rope, that has kerosene on it and the fire is like slowly and surely going up, you know how like they end up climbing on top of each other. That's what, that's what the NCAA is doing. Just desperately trying not to get burned by the entire college athletics world. And they can't do it. And they, they, they simply cannot do it. They'd make every possible misstep because they just want to hold on to some power and they don't have any. And the idea that prop bets hurt the integrity of the game. And I wrote this for outkick today. The, the idea that prop bets hurt the integrity of the game is absolutely backwards to reality because the gambling market regulating prop bets actually makes sure the integrity stays the way it should be because these sports books don't want to get burned. Go back to the Alabama baseball scandal, right? That got Brad Bohannon fired. Why did that even come to light? Because the casinos saw it and were like, what the hell is going on? Same thing with the Iowa and Iowa State stuff this year. It's just like, guys, the fact that you have legalized gambling actually helps you regulate it because it's not going away. I mean, we all saw blue chips. We saw Nick Nolte and Tony get into it about Tony shaving points. Like, do you want it to be above board or on the black market? Because it's going to be on the black market if you ban prop bets. And it also takes away your most important, you know, a police force. And that is the sports books themselves. Cause they don't want to get taken to the cleaners. Yeah. I feel like there should be some prop bets on whether or not this thing even gets passed. Like that should be a, what, what should be happening? Like over under amount of people to actually vote for this or want for this. I just, I just don't know like, what it this looks is, like. This is cra- the, the NCAA has lost to, at the Supreme court level nine zero. Do you know how hard it is to lose nine zero in the United States Supreme Court, like you have to really suck in order for that to happen. Yeah, you got to you got to really have it to where if everybody's against you in politics, you know, in, in Washington, yes, then you know it's a it's in a bad way. But hopefully it doesn't get passed. Hopefully it's nothing that sets because it just it doesn't make any sense. But hey, that's uh, keeps it entertaining and it's always great for that's uh, right. For, There's for, no for doubt stuff there too. But uh, Barrett, as always, man, appreciate you joining me. Talk a little college football, talk in Arkansas. You can follow him at Barrett Salee on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. And also you can follow all of his great work at outkick.com covering all things college football. But Barrett, appreciate you, man. Enjoy the spring season, man. And if we don't talk to you here soon, then uh, we'll be seeing you down in Dallas for SEC media days. All right. My pleasure, dude. And don't forget the Braves Report podcast from the AJC as well. That started this week. So that's that's good news. Man, look at you. You're doing podcasts and everything. It's almost like uh, you're a part of the new format and platform of media in the digital space of sports. That's it's it's crazy how that works, right? Just trying to follow in your footsteps, John. Just trying to be like you and Natty Sports and what yeah, you've been doing. Yeah. You're doing a great job. I'm, yeah, I'm really happy you. for you, man. Thank you, man. It's 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 going well. But we appreciate it, man, and we'll talk to you later. All right. 